I feel nothing but outrage at every new vista of moral and ethical depravity Governor Abbott dreams up and the revelry in the bread and circuses spectacle conservatives have in it. They howl that they are defending Western culture from an assault by men, women, and children fleeing ecological ruin and certain personal harm, taking no few risks to life and limb doing so. The GOP and conservative churches are indeed upholding a version of Western heritage, but it's not the one we think of. Rather, it's that of imperial Roman brutality towards those they accuse of destroying the U.S. cultural order. Abbott is little more than a Nero who orders his soldiers to cast men, women, and children into the Rio Grande to drown, suffer exposure, or be ensnared by razor wire. Some have died. The irony here is that these migrants are largely practicing Catholics and Protestants. In every political gesture in recent memory, U.S. conservatives find a way to inject themselves into people's lives, depriving them of liberty or to bring them to harm. That an evil man like Abbott exists is not unusual. The world is peppered with them. But sane communities isolate such people from their midst. They do not make them into their ruler. Yet, at the same time, Christian religious leaders lament that their children drop out of the church or that churchgoers now reject the teachings of Christ as no good and weak. But this is not surprising. Over decades, conservative Christian leaders have deliberately forged their congregations into a voting bloc for their own political ends. It is not surprising that their congregations unconsciously recognize this reality. Little wonder that the young resent and turn away from churches dedicated to a movement itself dedicated to the idea that violence and despite is a valid pathway to dominate society and to gain wealth and power. Conservative churches are in crisis, but this is a problem of their own making. They chose to forge their congregations into a voting bloc out of resentment towards desegregation, their hatred of their fellow man, and they purposely shaped abortion as an issue to achieve this political end. They allied themselves with authoritarian wealth, all too happy to support them with money and a megaphone. Once the movement broke the pretense of abortion, their true sentiments flow ever more freely to the surface in an unending rising tide of hate and cruelty, hurtling the nation to ruin, and all of it has only served to support the insane opulence and luxury of the few on the backs of the many. The kids see this, and they understandably reject it because they know that they are the many. Here I will list the results of a survey from Lifeway Research on the reasons why young adult Christians stop attending church on a regular basis. They moved to college and stopped attending church, 34%. Church members seemed judgmental or hypocritical, 32%. I didn't feel connected to people in my church, 29%. I disagreed with the church's stance on political and social issues, 25%. And 24% of them said that their work responsibilities prevented them from attending who would have thought that younger adults might feel alienated amongst judgmental, hypocritical elders? Who would have thought that they were alienated by being pressured to support a political party and social outlook they do not agree with? And who would have thought that they even had 
time to participate as they struggle to make ends meet with their third gig job. And of course, who would have thought that a half century of political indoctrination to push the older generation into the arms of a political party intent on immiserating working people and which only sought wealth and power above all else could have created a generation of judgmental hypocrites. And only now, church leaders are finding out the consequences of two or three generations of religion in the service of political indoctrination. And I tell Christians that that one of the reasons we need to reject wokeism is because it actually robs us from our ability to suffer for Christ. You know, if, if all of my persecution is only as a result of what, you know, what I, uh, um, my, my country of origin, my skin color, my, my socioeconomic status, uh, my gender, my sexuality, if all my suffering is because of that, when do I suffer for Jesus? Yeah. And as believers, we are called to suffer for Christ because the world we know hates yeah. God and therefore hates us, but if we take all the credit for that hate because of some sort of just temporary marker in our own life that just you know that distinguishes us from another person i think we're really robbing god of the glory that can be given to him in the face of persecution